வெல்கம் பேக் ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் இது ரீப்ரொடக்ஷன் அண்ட் ஆர்கானிசம்ஸ் பார்ட்டில் நெக்ஸ்ட் வீடியோ இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வில் சி சம் டேர்ம்ஸ் தட் ஆர் ரிலேட்டட் டு ரீப்ரொடக்ஷன் இன் பிளான்ஸ் அண்ட் அனிமல்ஸ் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் வில் ஸ்டார்ட் வித் த டேர்ம்ஸ் தட் ஆர் ரிலேட்டட் டு பிளான்ஸ் த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் திங் எஸ் ஆனுவல் பிளான்ஸ் annual plants or plants that are going to complete their life cycle within an year so within an year they are going to complete their life cycle here one year is going to represent it is not uh, the uh, year that starts with uh, january or ends with december and the madri la edhum kedaiyadu year abdingaradhu vandittu enna abdina it is seed to seed cycle so or short period of time la vandittu or seed uh, germinate aaga aarambichadile irundhu and the seed germinate ana plant la irundittu seed formation vara varaikkum vandittu or complete cycle adu vandittu seed to seed cycle in the seed to seed cycle vandittu is completed within an year idu vandittu such plants are called as annual plants and the example of annual plants are wheat rice barley oats corn all these are annual plants the next term is biennial plants biennial plants they take nearly 2 years to complete their life cycle such plants are called as biennial plants here two years again is going to represent the seed to seed which usually starts with one season and ends with another season and biennial plants la vandute germination of the seed and the vegetative growth phase of life cycle usually takes place in one season that is in one year and the flowering that is in the reproductive age and seed formation happens in the second year that is in the next season so the biennial plants are actually uh, very uh, less uh, commonly seen uh, here the example of biennial plants are carrot cabbage and sugar beets so these are examples of biennial plants the third is perennial plants perennial plants are going to live more than 2 years such plants are called as perennial plants and most commonly seen is the perennial plants example for perennial plants is banana potato tomato pomegranate strawberry black pepper onion garlic ginger ground nut so most of them are going to be perennial in existence and one main difference between annual biennial and perennial is annual and biennial plants they are going to show flowering only once in their lifetime whereas perennial plants they are going to show flowering show flowering in two ways either 
all through the year so all through the year without having any seasons they are going to show flowering or they are going to be seasonal flowering plants so uh, based on the season they are going to show only in particular season uh, season uh, they show flowering and uh, the again the flowering would be seen only the next season so this is uh, annual biennial and perennial plants similarly in animals also in animals also we can classify animals into two broad groups one is called as seasonal breeders the other one they are called as continuous breeders seasonal breeders abdina they are going to produce offsprings only in particular seasons so only seasonally they are going to produce their gametes undergo fertilization and produce their offsprings whereas continuous breeders they they are capable of producing offsprings so they are capable of producing their offsprings all through their reproductive stage so unless they enter into the uh, a senescent phase they are going to be capable of reproducing so th throughout the reproductive stage they would be uh, able to uh, breed that is they will be able to produce their offsprings in the next we will see about the sexuality in plants and animals so first in case of plants so the reproductive organ is going to be flower so if the plant is going to have the both male and female organs in the same plant it is going to be oh sorry in the flower it is going to be called as a bisexual flower so bisexual flower abdina it is going to have male and female parts in same flower the flower would be called as a bisexual flower and if suppose the flower is going to have either male or female organ alone so the flower that has either male or the female part in one flower such flowers would be called as unisexual flowers the unisexual flower that has only the male part that is the antherium alone so if the flower has only the male part the flower would be called as a staminate flower or the unisexual flower that contains only the female part would be called as pistillate flower so the the unisexual flower means the flower is going to have either antherium or gynecium flower only with antherium will be called staminate only with gynecium will be called as pistillate apram there can be one more term dioecious plants nama first padichathu vandittu bisexual flower unisexual flower inge vandittu dioecious plant dioecious plant appadina enna appadina they are plants with unisexual flowers so male female ne rendu thani thani plant irukka pogudha rendu plant irukkaradunala vandittu we call it as dioecious plant so plants are going to be separate po oru plant vandittu male plant a irukum innor plant vandittu female plant a irukum and the reason nala vandittu we call it as dioecious plant and monoecious plant monoecious plant appadina these are plants with bisexual flowers
so plants with bisexual rendume irukum so they will have both male and rhesium gynesium rendume vandittu ore plant la irundichu appadina the plant would be called as monoecious so it is mono means a single plant with both the flowers di means two two plants with one having male flower and the other having female flower so idu vandittu monoecious and dioecious conditions in case of plants adutha vandittu fungi la fungi bisexual conditions bisexual condition appadina having both male and female in the same uh, thallus of the fungi if it is having it is in the same thallus it is called as homo thallic condition and if the thallus is going to be unisexual in condition it is called as heterothallic condition so two different uh, mycelium or two different uh, thallus is required for sexual reproduction so it is called as heterothallic and in case of animals most of the animals are going to have they are going to be unisexual adavad bisexual characters one that is going to be very rare in case of animals animals la vandu most probably male thaniyavum female thaniyavum da vandu animals irukum so most of them are going to be mostly unisexual and these unisexual animals adavadhu unisexual animals in the sense vandittu oru male animal oru female animal irukum and the male animal female animal vandittu they will show sexual dimorphism adavadhu just with their morphology we will be able to identify will be able to identify edu male edu female nu vandu verum morphological conditions vechi namnala identify panna mudiyum so they will show sexual dimorphism if suppose they are going to be bisexual that is bisexual animals vandu they will be called as herma frodites that is having both male and female sex organs in the same animal example of bisexual animals is earthworm leeches tapeworm sponges so mostly invertebrates are going to be bisexual hermaphrodites uh, unisexual organisms vandu higher animals that is uh, vertebrates uh, higher invertebrates id ellame vandu they are going to be unisexual in nature that is thani thaniya male animal thaniyavu female animal thaniyavu irukum so next we'll start with the process of sexual reproduction or events that are happening in sexual reproduction one after the other the first one is pre fertilization events pre fertilization events la vandu there are two processes one is gametogenesis or gamete formation and second step is going to be gamete transfer now we will first see what is gametogenesis how is it happening uh, what are the different names given to it adukapra nama vandu gamete transfer eppadi nu paathukalam so first vandu gametes abadina vandu they are going to be always haploid structures so gametes are always haploid and they can be either male or female and one more differentiation is there are two types of gametes so one vandu male gamete female gamete nu or differentiation innoru differentiation vandu they are either homogametes or heterogametes first homogametes abadina homogametes also called as isogametes in the gametes la vandute id enna special character appadina vandute you will not be able to differentiate between male and female gametes cannot differentiate 
male and female gametes so they are going to be identical to each other this type of gametes are usually seen only in lower plants and uh, lower uh, animals adutathu heterogametes heterogametes are going to be different from each, each other idile most of the male gametes mostly the male gametes are going to be smaller in size produced in large number and they are going to be motile so these are male gametes male gametes usually called as anthrocytes in case of lower plants pollen grains in case of higher plants and sperms in case of animals adutha the female gametes female gametes are going to be larger in size and they are going to be very few in number most commonly only one is produced and they are non motile means they cannot move and they are stationary also that is they are fixed to a position so such uh, gametes or female gametes and these female gametes in case of animals or plants they are either called as egg or the ovum and which cells are going to form gametes the gamete forming cells this depends upon the organism if suppose organism vandute it is going to be haploid in nature so the organism vandute if it is haploid in nature it is going to undertake only mitosis ena we know gametes vandute they are always haploid so already vandute plant or illa animal or vandute if they are haploid in nature adile vandute mitotic divisions mattum da nadakum resulting in formation of mitosis for gamete formation whereas if the organism is diploid if organism diploid appadina vera valiye kedaiyadu meiosis edutha mattum da vandittu gamete formation vandittu nadakka mudiyum because gamete vandittu haploid ah maarano so meiosis nadandha da haploid conditions kedaikum so they take up meiosis and cells that undergo meiosis to form gametes so gamete forming cells that undergo meiosis are called as meiocytes and the process of gamete formation in case of animals male gamete we know male gamete vandu is called as sperm and the male gamete formation is going to be called as spermatogenesis female gamete formation is called oogenesis and in case of plants male gamete formation is called as microsporogenesis and female gamete formation is called megasporogenesis so these are all the names of the uh, gamete forming structures the next is going to be gamete transfer the second part in pre fertilization event is gamete transfer so why has to be the gamete transferred appadina yen transfer aganu appadina because female gametes 
or fixed so ore edathila irukiradnal so now ipo male gametes vandittu they have to go in search, search of female gametes they have to find the female gametes so or transfer technology irundha mattum dhaan vandittu male gametes can reach the female gametes so male gametes have to reach the female gametes anyhow they have to reach the female gametes in the reason nala da vandittu male gametes vandittu they are produced in large number because during their search the female gamete theedi pogumbodhu vandittu if suppose they are not able to meet they would be lost appo loss of gametes aidum adu nadakkakudadungirukaga for even for a single egg or ovum that is formed many thousands of the male gamete will be formed so that at least one can reach and the species vandittu loss aagama irukkaradukaga adula kandipa ரீப்ரொடக்ஷன் நடக்குது அப்படின்னு என்ஷியோர் பண்ணுற ஒரு ரீசன்காக வேண்டி வந்துட்டு மேல் கேமிட்ஸ் வந்துட்டு லார்ஜ் நம்பரில் ப்ரொடியூஸ் ஆகும் கேமிட் ட்ரான்ஸ்ஃபர் இன் பிளான்ஸ் இன் லோயர் பிளான்ஸ் லோயர் பிளான்ஸ் யூஸ்வலி ரெஃபர் டு ப்ரையோஃபைட்ஸ் டெரிடோஃபைட்ஸ் அண்ட் ஆல்கே இதில் வந்துட்டு தி ஃபர்டிலைசேஷன் க சாரி கேமிட் ட்ரான்ஸ்ஃபர் இஸ் த்ரூ ஆல்வேஸ் வாட்டர் ஸோ த மேல் கேமிட்ஸ் ஆர் கோயிங் டு ட்ராவல் த்ரூ வாட்டர் டு ரீச் தி ஃபீமேல் கேமிட்ஸ் இன் கேஸ் ஆஃப் ஹையர் பிளான்ஸ் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் இன் ஜிம்னோஸ்பர்ம்ஸ் ட்ரான்ஸ்ஃபர் ஆஃப் கேமிட் இஸ் ஒன்லி த்ரூ விண்ட் only wind pollination is possible in case of high in gymnosperms whereas in angiosperms angiosperms that they can be self or cross pollination self pollination within the same flower cross pollination between different flowers idu vandha cross pollination so when it is in different plants it can happen through agents through agents called pollinators or pollinating agents and the process of transfer vandha the process of transfer of pollen that is the uh, male gamete from one flower to the female part of another flower the process is called as pollination and this pollination can be self or cross and cross pollination happens through many pollinators and nama in the pollinators enna na details adoda flower eppadi irukum pollinators enna help pannudhu eppadi help pannudhu abingiradha la vandu sexual reproduction flowering plants unit la we'll study it in detail and next vandu animals la animals gamete transfer is by process called copulation this involves the male gamete is deposited in the female reproductive tract so deposition of male gamete in female reproductive tract on that is called as copulation so this is pre fertilization events so pre fertilization events la first vandittu gamete formation or gametogenesis adutha vandittu transfer of gametes the second uh, part is going to be fertilization fertilization abadina vandittu fusion of the gametes male and female gametes we call it as fertilization also called as syngamy 
and this fertilization is of two types one is external fertilization and the other one is internal fertilization external fertilization abdina both male and female gametes are released externally externally out into some medium mostly into water so the uh, organisms that is taking up external fertilization is going to release the male and female gametes into water and the fusion of gametes fusion of gametes takes place externally that is outside the body such one uh, such type of fertilization is called as external fertilization external fertilization is seen in so example for organisms that is taking up external fertilization in lower plants usually most commonly seen in uh, not commonly that is uh, seen only in algae uh, that too only in few algae and uh, in animals like external fertilization seen in fishes and frogs and internal fertilization abdina vandittu here the zygote formation is going to happen internally so zygote formed in inside the female body such type of fertilization is called as internal fertilization example of plants uh, organisms taking up internal fertilization is most of the plants and higher animals it is external fertilizer sorry internal fertilization and the last step in re sexual reproduction is the post fertilization event post fertilization events the, the uh, thing that is happening is called as embryogenesis because it is development of embryo so post fertilization event there is only one uh, action that is embryogenesis embryogenesis in plants usually results in seed formation in higher plants lower plants do not show this seed formation habit they instead uh, have different life cycles the uh, haplontic life cycles and the diplontic life cycles that are go or haplodiplontic life cycles which is going to have the alternation of generations so there is no seed formation seen in lower plants higher plants la vandute seed formation will be seen idile the seed formation la difference vandute angiosperms angiosperms la vandute seeds or enclosed into inside fruits whereas in case of gymnosperms seeds are said to be naked seeds because there is no fruit formation in case of gymnosperms so seed is said to be a naked seed because fruit formation irukada adanalla naked seeds and in case of animals animals la vandute animals can be differentiated into uh, two types based on embryogenesis one is oviparous animals and the other one is viviparous animals oviparous animals abdina egg laying animals in the egg laying animals la vandute there are two categories egg laying animals which have undergone external fertilization so eggs that are laid or formed after external fertilization 
and egg formation after internal fertilization. If suppose if the organism is undergoing external fertilization, in a zygote form of home, zygotes they are going to form an egg shell around them. So they are going to form an egg shell around them and in the in the zygotes they will not have not enough nourishment will be present. That is nutrition enough uh, quantity so there is no enough nourishment. So the eggs are going to hatch out larvae. So larvae will be hatched out and this larvae starts feeding and it grows undergoes a process called metamorphosis results in formation of an adult so external fertilization nadandichu appadina anga egg form aagum and the egg vandittu the zygotes vandittu or egg shell vandittu develop pannum in the egg shell ku la vandittu nourishment pathada reason nala larva vandittu adavadhu incompletely developed egg one vandittu release aagum hatch out aagum in the larvae vandittu they starts feeding externally they are going to grow undergo metamorphosis metamorphosis appadina morphologically la nadakkira changes usually vandittu it is under the control of hormones in the metamorphosis nadandadukapram it is converted into adult example for such animals they are going to be insects and frogs if suppose an organism is going to take up internal fertilization and it is going to be an oviparous animal that is the egg laying animal and the condition the zygote is going to form egg shell around them. So they are going to form an egg shell around them. Anna, in a difference apadina, because it is internal fertilization, nourishment vandita, they are going to have excess amount of nourishment. So they would have enough nourishment. This nourishment can support to support the complete growth of the young one. Such X one that X will be called as cleidoic X. Cleidoic X na one that self sufficient X abdina artham. So, they would be having enough amount of nutrition. Nutrition is the reason for the reason for the reason for the would be completely developed. And these are going to hatch out. In the eggs, when they are going to hatch out, the completely grown young one. Example, birds and reptiles. So this is oviparous animals. So oviparous animals are egg laying animals. Egg laying animals are uh, self sufficient eggs, cleidoic eggs. That is the internal fertilization. External fertilization is developed in an organism. The larva is hatched out in metamorphosis. La adult formation is This is oviparous type of embryogenesis seen in animals. Second type of embryogenesis seen in animals is viviparous. Embryogenesis. Viviparous embryogenesis Sabrina, the animals are going to give birth to the young ones. Example all mammals. So this is embryogenesis seen in animals. So, so they can be either oviparous or 
Vivi, Paris, Embryo, Genesis. So, with this, uh, we have uh, completed the uh, unit of reproduction in organisms. Na doubts in the chana group la discuss paniklam, and uh, we'll meet it in the we'll meet you in the uh, next uh, chapter. Thank you.